I want to describe and explain to you a very important tool and twig, and it's called the unit circle. Let me give a quick summary of the purpose of the unit circle. The unit circle is a tool that allows us to very quickly determine the sine and cosine of all kinds of special angles. One or two talks ago, we talked about special angles. And because we were using the right triangles, we said there were three special angles, 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. Well, actually, there are more special angles than just 30, 60, and 90. But the thing is, with the right triangle, you can't really draw them. However, what we're going to do is we're going to now start go back and draw some angles on our X and Y graph. Because when you draw angles on an X and Y graph, you can draw whatever angles you want. For instance, I know if my initial side of my angle is the x-axis. The y-axis, therefore, is a 90-degree angle. If I try and go halfway, what have I got? 45-degree angle. It's one of my special angles. But you know what? If I go to the second quadrant and I start here, at the y-axis, which is 90 degrees, and I say, well, how about I go 45 degrees I've moved 45 degrees, but really, you know what my angle actually is? Because we always start from the y-axis, my actual angle is 90 degrees plus 45 we actually labeled this as a 135 degree angle. This one we label as a 45 degree angle. You cannot draw a 135 degree angle with the right triangle. However, I can represent 135 degree angle on my X and Y graph. So that's what this unit circle, the idea is. The unit circle, we're going to mark off all of our special angles all the way around. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to initially do it by marking off the degrees. Although I'm just warning you now that with the unit circle, we're also going to have to look at the angles and radians and you use radians a lot more than degrees for unit circles. So just a heads up that you're going to be using radians a lot when you're using a unit circle. So I'm going to start out. So the unit circle the whole key is when I draw this circle it's going to have a radius of 1. So I'm going to mark on my axes a distance of 1. And I'm just going to try and draw a circle now. Certainly not perfect, but... And using the x-axis as a starting point, I'm going to go around and just mark off all my special angles. So I've got three special angles, 30 degrees, 60, 35, 45, and 60. So let me mark all my axes, 90 degrees, straight across to 180 degrees, 
negative y-axis is 270 degrees, and if I go all the way around again, I'm at 360 degrees, right? We've already learned that. So let's mark my special angles. If I go halfway to 90, let me just mark the point here. I'm not going to draw the actual angle because it gets too messy, but if I do my angle here, that would be 45 degrees. On my other special angle, if I move right here, 30 degrees, and then the other special angle is 60 degrees. So those are the three special angles in the first quadrant. But I also have special angles in the other quadrants. So it's almost like what you do is you start here for the second quadrant. You can start here at 90 degrees. And I'm going to move 30 more degrees, which puts me at 120. And then 45 degrees is my next special angle. So that leaves me at 135 degrees. And then 60 degrees is my next special angle. So 90 plus 60 is 150. So these are all also special angles. Just like 30, 45, and 60 are special angles, well, so are 120, 135, and 150. They're really sort of kind of the same, but they're not, but they're very similar. And I keep doing the same thing all the way around the circle. If I start now at 180, if I want to move 30 degrees, because that's one of my special angles, that puts me at 210 degrees. If I want to move 45 degrees, that puts me at 225 degrees. If I want to move 60 degrees from 180, that leaves me at 240 degrees. And finally, for the fourth quadrant, if I move 30 degrees from 270, it's 300. If I move 45 degrees from 270, it's like 315 degrees. If I move 60 degrees from 270. So these are all the special angles in one trip around the circle. Now, let's go ahead and take the time and figure out what these angles would be in radians. Degrees, I think you probably have a pretty good feel for radians. It's going to take a little while to get used to it. Of course, with radians, you start out again at zero. Hopefully you remember well, all the way across, we know is pi radians. The y-axis ends up being pi over 2, which sort of makes sense. If it's pi all the way across, then halfway would be half of pi, pi over 2. The negative y-axis ends up being 3 pi over 2, which is halfway between pi. And I go back here. Right, all the way around the unit circle, I've gone 2 pi. So those are the x and y axis angles. Now, how about the special angles? Now here's a little trick, a way to remember. Let's go to my 30 degree angle. Because I've done this for many years, I remember this angle here as pi over 6. Now here's what I want you to see, and here's the easiest way to remember all the labels for these points. These points are like in groups of four. And by that I mean this 30 degree angle you're going to see is very similar and looks almost the same as this angle here, which is 30 degrees from the x-axis, and this angle here and this angle here. As a matter of fact, I won't go into it in great detail, but you know what is true about these four angles? They all have the same reference angle. Remember, reference angle is how far away, how far, what's the shortest distance to the x-axis? 
You know, for all four of these points, you know what the reference angle is? 30 degrees. So really, they're going to look a lot alike. So in terms of the angle, radians, pi over 6, if I go over here, you know what's going to happen? My denominator is also going to be 6. And now, if right here is an angle of pi, I'm just a little less than pi. What would a little less than pi be? How about 5 pi over 6? If you want to, you can think of pi as like 6 pi over 6. A little bit less is 5 pi over 6. I go to my point here once again. Matter of fact, all four of these points, the denominator is always 6. Now, this angle is just a little bit more than pi. How about 7 pi over 6, right? 7, 6 is just a little bigger than 1. And if I go over here, I'm almost back to 2 pi, but not quite. You know what a number is going to be? How about 11 pi over 6? 11 pi over 6 is almost 2 pi, right? 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6. So these four points here, for the radian measure of the angle, they all have a denominator of 6. How about for my middle special angle? This angle right here turns out in the first quadrant, that angle is pi over 4. That sort of makes sense, right? It's halfway between 0 and pi over 2. But you know what? This middle angle, all the middle angles are also reference angles. So they're all going to look very similar. As a matter of fact, if I go to these other three points, when I figure out what the angle is in radians, all those are going to have a denominator of 4. Pi over 4 here. Halfway between pi over 2 and pi would be 3 pi over 4. From pi to 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 4, and here, 7 pi over 4. And then the last point is this one up here in my first quadrant. This is actually, whoops, oh my, pi over 3. So now this point is a reference angle with this point. I don't know why that's there. And it's a reference angle with this point, reference angle with this point. So they're all going to have a denominator of 3. This one ends up being 2 pi over 3. This one ends up being 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So what I want you to see is it's almost like these four points all four of those points for the radian measure of the angle the denominator is always 6. For the middle points notice all four of those when you look at the radian measure of the angle they all have a denominator of 4 and finally, the last four points, look at the denominator. For all of them, it's three. This is very messy. However, let me show you a nice picture that I'll give you in class. And you can see, here are my three special angles. You can see the degrees, 30, 45, 60. And right here are the radian measures of the angle. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. You go to the second quadrant. Of course, your degrees start getting bigger. And here are the radian measures. So look here, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. Pi over 4 in the first quadrant, 
3 pi over 4 in the second quadrant, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. And then you go all around the unit circle. It's like there's a pattern. It's like these points are in groups of four. So that's the first thing that's very helpful. How to mark these key angles all the way around the unit circle. And just, once again, just emphasize, to be honest, we don't use degrees that much when we use the unit circle. It's mainly radian measures, so you have to be able to recreate the unit circle and know which angle is for radians. So based upon that, how does the unit circle help us? Let me give you a couple of quick problems, and then based upon that, I'm going to show you how the unit circle helps us to quickly figure out the solutions. Let me give you three, let's have three or four pretty simple questions, right? Someone may say, please tell me, now I'm going to start using radians, all right? No more degrees for a while. Someone says, What's the cosine of pi over 6, right? Pi over 6 is an angle in radians. Someone says, what's the cosine of pi over 6? And then they say, what's the sine of 5 pi over 3? Now, we are not going to use our calculators to figure out these trig functions. These are actually, each one of these are some of our special angles. And for special angles, we're not going to go use our calculators. We're going to use the unit circle to determine what these trig functions are. Let's do a couple more. How about, um, someone says, what's the cosine of... 7 pi over 4. And here's an interesting one. Maybe do two more. Someone says, what's the sine? 13 pi over 6. And then here, just for fun, let's throw in a tangent. How about someone says, what's the tangent of... Four pi over three. All right, once you understand and learn and know the unit circle, these will each take you about 10 or 15 seconds each. So how does that work? Let me go to the nice diagram of the unit circle. So here, all the special angles are marked in degrees and radians. The key are really the radians. We've got to use radians. Now you notice in this diagram over here, this is like an ordered pair. It's like, here's the point. This point creates a 30 degree angle. It's almost like the x is greater than 3 over 2 and the y is 1 half, right? That point right there the x is square root of 3 over 2, the y is 1 half. That's the actual, that's what the x and the y is. But when you have a unit circle, the thing that makes it special is, besides being the x, you know what this also is? For any point on the unit circle, the x is always the same thing as the cosine of the angle. And the y is always the sine of the angle. So somehow, if I were able to know the points, the x and y at each of these special angles, then right away I would know the cosine and sine. Let's answer 
my questions by looking at this chart. Now I'm warning you right now, on the test, you will not have this chart. You will have it memorized. But just to show you how we use it, let me show you the chart. So for instance, cosine of pi over 6. To find cosine of pi over 6, I go to the unit circle and I find my pi over 6 point. And since I'm trying to find the cosine, I go look for the x value of the point and that will be the cosine of pi over 6. So here's my unit circle. Pi over 6 is right here. What's the value of x? Square root of 3 over 2. Right away, I've just determined cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 5 pi over 3. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the unit circle. I'm going to go find where 5 pi over 3 is. I'm going to look at that point, and since it's the sine, I know the sine is always the y value of that point. So I'll go to 5 pi over 3, figure out what the y is, and I've got sine of 5 pi over 3. In this case, the sine of 5 pi over 3 is down here. I mean, 5 pi over 3 is down here. The sine is the value of y, which is right here, negative square root of 3 over 2. So I've just very quickly and easily determined that the sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3 over 2. How about the cosine of 7 pi over 4? Let's think through the thought process. I'm going to go on my unit circle. I'm going to find the 7 pi over 4 angle. And since I'm looking for the cosine, I'm going to go find the x value of that point. So 7 pi over 4 is right here. Since I want the cosine, it's the x value, and it's going to be square root of 2 over 2. Matter of fact, before I do these final two, let me do a couple others that I don't always think about. How about the sine of pi over 2? Maybe the cosine of pi. Here's a tricky one. How about the sine of 3 pi? So that is, I'm going to go to my unit circle. So sine of pi over 2. Go, unit, go to my unit circle. Find pi over 2. When I find that point, I'm going to look up the y value. And that's the sine of pi over 2. Turns out pi over 2 is right here, straight up, sort of along the y-axis. There's pi over 2. Since I want the sine, I go get the value of y. It's 1. I know the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Cosine of pi, I'm going to go to the unit circle. I'm going to go find the angle pi. And since I'm looking for the cosine, I want to get the x value. So here's pi, the x value is negative 1, so I know the cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of 3 pi, alright, this one's sort of fun. So what I want to do is, theoretically, is I want to go to the inner circle and go find the angle 3 pi. And when I find the angle 3 pi, I'm going to get the y value of that point, and that'll be my sine of 3 pi. So I go to my unit circle, and I'm looking all the way around, and I get to 2 pi, and then that's as big as it gets. There's no 3 pi on here. Well, what happens is, and I think you probably know this already, if I start here, when I go all the way around, I have a 2 pi angle, and what this is saying is, okay, but I want 3 pi, so what do I do? I keep going. How much farther do I go? Well, if all the way around once is 2 pi, I need to get to 3 pi. I need to go pi more. And pi, of course, is halfway across. So actually, this is the idea of coterminal angles. Pi 
and 3 pi are coterminal. We're at the same angle. So if I get the sine of 3 pi, I go right here. The sine is the y value is 0. And I say the sine of 3 pi is 0. Now let's go back and finish these last two. Sine of 13 pi over 6. If you think about it, 13 pi over 6 is actually larger than 2 pi. So once again, the idea is I want to go find the 13 pi over 6 angle on my unit circle. And once I find that point, I'm going to go look up the y value, and, I, and that's going to be the sine of 13 pi over 6. But you know what? 13 pi over 6 is not labeled on my unit circle. And that's because... 13 pi over 6 is larger than 2 pi. In other words, I've gone around the circle once, and now I have to keep going. So where is 13 pi over 6? Well, the unit circle all the way around is 2 pi, which is actually 12 pi over 6. So if I'm wanting to get to 13 pi over 6, I go all the way around, and how much more do I have to go? I have to go pi over 6 more. So pi over 6 is really the same point as 13 pi over 6. And since I want the sine, I go get the y value, and I say the sine of 13 pi over 6 is 1 half. Now finally, tangent. Now tangent's interesting because you know what? I can go on the unit circle and I can go find the angle 4 pi over 3, but I know the x is like the cosine of 4 pi over 3, and the y is the sine of 4 pi over 3, but I don't know what the tangent is. Well, this is where you have to remember that I can always rewrite the tangent as the sine of 4 pi over 3 over the cosine of 4 pi over 3. So how about I go find 4 pi over 3 in my unit circle, I get the sine of it, which is the y value, and then I get the cosine, which is the x value, and then I put them in a fraction, and then I'll have the tangent. So 4 pi over 3 is right here. So the sine is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2, and the cosine is going to be negative 1 half. So I plug those in. So the sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. The cosine is negative 1 half. Now when I simplify this, the negatives cancel out, the 2's cancel out. I'm simply left with... So the tangent of 4 pi over 3 is square root of 3. So that's how the unit circle is used. It allows you to very quickly and easily find the trig functions of some of these special angles. Now the thing you might be thinking is, wow, you mean I've got to somehow memorize this whole unit circle? Well, in the next video, I'm going to specifically show you how to very quickly be able to create this unit circle. I've already given you a clue because when, I, when we figured out what the radian angles were, I talked about having the same denominators and that kind of thing. And then next, I'm going to give you a very easy way to remember what the X and the Ys are. So we'll go over that in the next video and help you really get the unit circle down pat.